integration system that allows hydrogen atoms to be squeezed together, creating nuclear fusion. Imagine a teenager standing in a modest basement workshop, copper coils in hand, a spoon in the other, confidently declaring that he's harnessing free energy from the air. Meanwhile, across the globe, a massive scientific facility, deep underground, 27 kilometers of tunnel, billions of calories worth of power, conducts the most intimate experiments ever performed on reality itself. And in the middle of it all, the claim. The boy genius sent a secret letter to this facility, asking them not to destroy the universe. Wiz kid with a very powerful idea. Max Lahan shares his story in tonight's Someone to Know. Today we'll ask, who is he? Did he really send that letter? And what is the boundary between scientific wonder and myth? Let's dive in. Infinite parallel universes constantly being created is literally flow of reality and time as we know it. In 2016, the story broke. A 13-year-old named Max Lotion surfaced in local news. He built an energy harvesting device out of a coffee can, some wire, and a coil. Materials bought for under $15. He wired LEDs and said he was capturing ambient energy from the air. It made the tech blogs. It made the lifestyle sections. Free energy from the atmosphere, the headlines read. His school mentioned him. A local news segment featured him. Suddenly, the internet had a new kid genius. But the narrative didn't stop there. A clip of him, somewhat longer, surfaced. Max in a white lab coat, describing quantum fields, parallel universes, the so-called Mandela effect, and speaking as though he'd already transcended conventional schooling. The viewers ate it up. A prodigy, a wunderkind. And as the story grew, the stakes grew too. The simple energy harvester morphed into something cosmic. The boy genius who warned the universe. And then, an audacious twist. Videos began claiming that Max had written a hidden letter to the CERN Large Hadron Collider, warning that their collisions might rip open a portal into another universe, or collapse ours. From a humble workshop to universal stakes, the narrative accelerated. Suddenly, it wasn't about LEDs. It was about reality itself. Let's slow things down. What did Max truly present? First, the device. Stripping away the hype, we find something akin to an ambient radio frequency harvester, a coil, a rectifier, a load. Capturing stray electromagnetic waves from the environment is not impossible. It's been done with crystal radios for decades. But the leap from harvesting ambient energy to redefining physics is enormous. While many outlets featured the story, a more cautious view described it as powering a strip of LEDs, not rewriting thermodynamics. Second, the CERN slash parallel universe claims. Here, things get fuzzier. Max appears in a video discussing the Mandela Effect, the phenomenon where large groups remember something differently from the historical record. He links this to alternate realities, saying that maybe our universe was destroyed and we live in the closest one remaining. He ties this thread to CERN's operations. But key, he gives no peer-reviewed paper, no institutional citation, no formal model. He asserts, he speculates, he inspires, but he doesn't validate. A skeptical blogger puts it bluntly. He uses many legitimate scientific terms, but does so in a way that makes absolutely no sense. This is not to diminish his curiosity, far from it. A teenager fascinated by physics is a joyful thing, but the boundaries matter. In science, confidence does not equal correctness. And when you wrap speculation in buzzwords and call it revelation, you leave room for myth. The device may work, the ideas may fascinate, but the story about portals, that's in the realm of narrative, not proof. Now, we arrive at the piece de resistance, the rumor of the hidden letter. According to viral posts and YouTube clips, Max wrote a letter to CERN, warning them of impending cosmic collapse. The stories say this letter is hidden because it exposes what they don't want you to know. But when we track the threads, we find no publicly verifiable document, no scan. No PDF with a CERN header. No timestamped reply. No mainstream media article referencing an official correspondence from a teenager to CERN. The claim collapses under scrutiny. Instead, what we find are montage videos. Voiceovers that declare the letter exists. Images of manila folders or old typewritten pages with no provenance. And comments from viewers saying, where's the document? 
The answer? Nowhere credible. Meanwhile, CERN has addressed a host of safety myths, from black hole creation to universe collapse, and none include acknowledgement of a letter from a 13-year-old. If the letter were real and significant, it would leave a trail. But it does not. So we must conclude. The hidden letter is better classified as an internet legend than a documented fact. That doesn't mean every claim Max made is false, but the specific one about the letter is unsubstantiated. Let's ground ourselves. CERN isn't a portal factory. It's a physics laboratory. It builds the Large Hadron Collider to smash particles, measure interactions, search for the Higgs boson, test the standard model, look for rare decays, probe dark matter. Yes, it uses high energies. Yes, it's deep underground. But crucially, its projects are peer-reviewed, open to scrutiny, staffed by thousands of scientists from dozens of countries. When concerns about universe-tearing machines surfaced, CERN released safety reports. One key point, cosmic rays constantly strike Earth with energies far greater than those produced in the collider, and the planet survives. The risk of destroying the universe is essentially zero, according to current physics. So the claim that CERN opened a portal or destroyed the universe carries no credible support. That matters because when a story attributes cosmic danger to CERN, we must ask, where is the evidence? What calculation does the portal show? What test has been reproduced? Without that, the narrative lacks the necessary chain of evidence. In other words, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and in this case, the evidence is lacking. Another layer of the myth that Max vanished from public view for six years, suppressed or hidden, only to reappear with dire warnings. This version of events circulated widely in 2022 to 23. Yet fact checkers found that Max did not vanish. His school, Tahoe Expedition Academy, posted his senior presentation in 2021, and he was referenced in school material continuously. The narrative of disappearance does not hold up under scrutiny. What we see instead is the life cycle of a viral story. Rise, embellishment, fade, re-emergence with added drama. It's a familiar cycle in the internet age. That doesn't mean the person was hidden, just that the myth around him changed shape. And it matters, because when someone claims you're hiding the truth, the appeal grows. But again, no evidence, no hidden archive, no secret document. This story has the triple ingredients of click culture. The youth genius, the $14 invention, the secret letter to the big machine underground. That's a perfect frame. It's simple. It's compelling. It sells. Social algorithms reward astonishment more than nuance. And when you combine science terms with mystery and threat, you get viral energy. On one level, you could say, fine, a kid made a device. He played with ideas. This kid with a very powerful idea. Max Lahan shares his story in tonight's Someone to Know. But on another level, the narrative taps into deeper themes. Fear of uncontrolled technology, the lure of alternative science, distrust of institutions. For many watchers, it's not about whether the letter exists, it's about what it would mean if it did. That drives shares, comments, remix videos, and memes. Meanwhile, fewer viewers ask, can I see the document? Can I see peer review? Can I follow the logic? The upshot. We live in an era where stories propagate faster than verification. And when science is dressed in sensational clothing, viewers often get the clothing and not the substance. Here's the distilled truth. Yes, Max Laugen gained viral attention for an invention marketed as energy harvesting, built for under $15. He expressed big ideas about reality, consciousness, and alternate universes. Yes, his name became woven into claims about CERN and timeline shifts, but there is no verifiable hidden letter to CERN. No credible documentation supports the claim, and the idea that he disappeared for years is contradicted by school records. That means if you're deciding what to believe, you must be clear about what has evidence and what remains speculation. You can admire his curiosity, you can follow the ideas, but you should also apply the same scrutiny you'd apply to any bold claim. Where's the proof? Who verified it? Will the result reproduce? Accept the wonder. But don't surrender your filter. If Max keeps tinkering, great. That's what invention is about. 
If CERN keeps unlocking the secrets of the universe, that's what science is about. But you don't need the secret letter storyline to find awe in physics. Reality is already stranger than mythic overlays, quantum fields, symmetry breaking, dark matter. These aren't clickbait, they're deeply real. So here's my invitation. Stay curious, stay skeptical. If you ever see a document you can scan, post it. If you see a headline that says, Kid stops CERN with letter, ask, where's the letter? Who received it? When? What's the chain of custody? The search for truth isn't glamorous, but it's infinitely more fruitful. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, like and subscribe. And above all, keep asking questions.